Hello everyone, welcome to Dr. Nikita's Rat Sign Apps and I'm Dr. Nikita here, your mentor for Neat PG and your mentor for Next. So our today's topic of discussion is a very very important topic not only for our exams but also as MBBS graduates all of us should know this and that is the normal ultrasound findings in early pregnancy. So why did I think of this topic is because recently I had put up a poll on my telegram channel. I'm sure all of you are aware of that we have a program where we give daily targets to the students to read so that it keeps them on track and I mean they don't have to make the timetable by themselves. So we have a great cohort of students which follow the daily targets and we put polls on those topics. So right now the subject which is going on is OBGY. So we have put up this poll asking what is the definitive sign of the intrauterine pregnancy. And as you can see, the correct answer is appearance of yolk sac. Only 16% of students could get it right. So that is when I realized that this is a topic that I should cover and each one of us should know about this. So why is it important to do ultrasound in early pregnancy? is because first of all to confirm the site of pregnancy whether it's intrauterine or it's an ectopic pregnancy then to look for dating that how many weeks the pregnancy is then to look for whether it's a singleton pregnancy or it's a twin pregnancy it's a triplet pregnancy all of that we need to determine and early pregnancy is the best time to do that then we need to look at the viability, whether the cardiac activity is present or not. We need to look for some hemorrhage or any ominous signs that, you know, raise a caution bell in our minds for the patients and the doctors, right? So let us see what are the various signs. As you can see, there are something called as intradecidual sign, the double decidual sac sign, there is yolk sac, and there are many other signs that we should know, as I said, not only for our exams, but for our clinical practice as well. So the various signs that we should see, the first thing that we would see is The first thing that we would see that we have a female who comes for a early pregnancy ultrasound. The best thing to do is a transvaginal sonography rather than doing a trans abdominal sonography. Because transvaginal sonography has a good resolution. It has a higher frequency probe. It has a higher resolution. And remember the difference for the clinical practice. It's important to know when the patient asks you, like suppose you write down that go and get an ultrasound done. So for transvaginal sonography, the bladder has to be empty. The urinary bladder has to be empty. But for transabdominal sonography, the urinary bladder has to be full. Because in transabdominal sonography, the full bladder with the fluid inside it, the urine inside it, it works as a good acoustic window for the sound waves. That is why we need full bladder in transabdominal sonography. But we do not need a full a bladder in transvaginal sonography because the full bladder will have a mass effect on the uterus then, which we do not need. All right. So that's the number one clinic point the daily practice point that we should know that empty bladder is required in transvaginal sonography now if we have a female who has just had a upt positive and it's not been even four weeks since the last menstrual period date that is the lmp uh, so i know that when the patient comes for ultrasound that i won't be seeing even a gestational sac right gestational sac is seen minimum when it is four weeks by transvaginal sonography at four weeks we see the gestational sac so the first thing that we see is the decidua that is the thickened endometrium it is because of the progesterone the corpus luteal cyst there we have progesterone so it leads to the secretory phase in the endometrium so there is thickened endometrium that is the first thing that we see that is the decidualization the next thing that we see is a gestational sac, a small cystic cavity within the decidua, a gestational sac. So that is called as intradecidual sign. So as you can see, intradecidual sign is the first sign and it tells you that it's an intrauterine pregnancy. So what do we see in intradecidual sign as the term says? Intradecidual sac sign or intradecidual sign within the decidua, there is a gestational sac. So as you can see here, this is the endometrium. You can see here, this is the endometrium which is thickened. And inside this thickened endometrium, we can see this small cystic. Why cystic? Because it's black on ultrasound. So that's a small cystic cavity. That's a gestational sac. And these arrowheads you can see, those are telling you the white line that's a collapsed uterine cavity. So that is your gestational sac. So that's the first sign that is an intradecidual sign, sign of intrauterine pregnancy, but not a definitive sign because it might be absent even in some intrauterine pregnancies. The next thing that we see is 
something called as double decidual sac sign there's something called as double decidual sac sign so the double decidual sac sign as the term says that surrounding the sac there is double decidua what are the double decidua there is decidua capsularis and there is decidua and there is decidua parietalis so which one is inside and which one is outside so parietalis p for p it is peripheral capsularis c is comes before a p so it is inside so surrounding the sac you have decidua capsularis then there is fluid and then there is decidua parietalis so that is your double decidual sac sign how does it look on ultrasound is what you can see here that again this is your gestational sac you can see the fluid filled gestational sac surrounding that the arrowheads those show you that decidua capsularis then you have the outer ring that is the decidua parietalis so that is your double decidual sac sign the next sign again of intrauterine pregnancy so we saw intra decidual sign we saw double decidual sac sign but both of these are not definitive they might be absent in small proportion of intrauterine pregnancies as well right so what do we see next the next two we see is the first definitive sign of intrauterine pregnancy what is that the first definitive sign of intrauterine pregnancy the first definitive sign of intrauterine pregnancy as you can see is the appearance of this ring like cystic structure within the gestational sac so this arrow shows you this ring like structure that is the yolk sac so the first thing to appear within the gestational sac is the yolk sac and if you see yolk sac within the gestational sac that tells you it's a definitive intrauterine pregnancy and that is what is the answer to the poll that i had put in my telegram group so the first definitive sign of intrauterine pregnancy is this appearance of the yolk sac within the gestational sac what do we see next what do we see next the next thing that we see is the next thing that we see is this is a yolk sac as we saw so the next thing that we see here that's the fetal pole that's the fetal pole so in this gestational sac we see this yolk sac and we see the fetal pole now after the fetal pole we want to look at the viability we want to look for viability that is the cardiac activity all right so we look for the cardiac activity before that let me tell you about the other sign which is the double bleb sign now what is the double bleb sign double bleb sign as a term says there are two blebs there are two blebs so one bleb is the yolk sac the other bleb which comes is the amnion the other bleb which comes is the amnion this amnion is generally seen after the fetal pole it is generally seen after the fetal pole all right so if in aims you get a question arrange in sequence which comes first which comes late so it would be gestational sac first then would be yolk sac then would be embryo that's the fetal pole and then is the amnion all right so this you can see here the double bleb sign you can see that this one this is the yolk sac and this one is the amnion why this one is the amnion this one is not the yolk sac because within this you can see the structure there that's the fetal pole and the fetal pole is seen within the amnion it's seen within the amnion not the yolk sac so remember that when you see the fetal pole that's the amnion and that's the yolk sac so that's that, that is the next sign that is the double bleb sign formed by the yolk sac and by the amnion coming to the next image here again this image shows us this here that's the yolk sac that's the amnion the amnion grows in size and you can see that this amniotic membrane which is there this amniotic membrane which the arrow had is showing it separates this amniotic cavity from the chorionic cavity and in the chorionic cavity we have this yolk sac and later on you can see here this is what is your this is the fetus which is there you can see that this is the head end this is the side profile this is what you see here that's the foot end and you can see that that's the yolk sac there that's the yolk sac there and this yolk sac surrounding connecting the yolk sac with the fetal abdomen here that is what is your vitello intestinal duct that's your vitello intestinal duct there the arrow which is showing there and this curved arrow which you see there those are showing the hands of the fetus such a beautiful image you can see the fingers the hands of the fetus like obstetric ultrasound is really something which gives you a kick when you see the babies i mean that's that's really really good so that's the vitello intestinal duct connecting the yolk sac and the baby abdomen and we know that the remnant of vitello intestinal duct it leads to meckel's diverticulum it leads to meckel's diverticulum 
The next thing that we see here is this is the fetal pole which we see there and we are measuring the CRL that is the crown rump length. So in the first trimester the best thing for dating of pregnancy that is how many weeks is it the best thing to look for is your CRL because of course you cannot measure the biparietal diameter you cannot measure the abdominal circumference the embryo is too small. So that is what we measured in the first trimester that's the crown rump length that is the CRL that's the CRL right. The next thing that we have to look for is, as I said, once you see the embryo, once you see the fetal pole, you want to look for the cardiac activity. So you can see the cardiac activity by this mode of ultrasound. I'm sure all of you know this, that this mode of ultrasound is the M mode of ultrasound, which helps us to look for the fetal heart rate, to calculate the fetal heart rate. All right. Now, this is a relatively larger fetus, approximately 8 to 10 weeks, and this is the head end and this is the uh, rump, that is the buttocks end, the foot end. Why do I call it this is the head end? Because in the head, you can see this uh, cystic structure there. This tells you, this helps you to identify the cranial end of the fetal pole. That cystic structure is actually the rhombencephalon which develops. And surrounding this fetal pole, you can see surrounding this embryo, you can see this membrane. So that's the amniotic membrane because we said that the fetus, the embryo develops within the amniotic membrane. This embryo keeps on growing and finally it fuses with the placenta and you will not be able to see it later. Again, this is the image which is showing you that how do you identify the cranial end. So if you identify the cystic structure within the head of the fetus, within the head of the embryo, that becomes your rhombencephalon. So that tells you that this is the cranial end. Do not mistaken it that there is some congenital anomaly. This is a normal appearance of the fetal brain in the early pregnancy. That is the rhombencephalon helps you to localize the cranial end of the embryo. The next thing again, again to reinforce this, this is your cranial end. You can see the rhombencephalon. This is the rump and this is what you see here, the four limb buds. You can see the four limb buds, one, two and three and four. So that is your cranial end and the caudal end. So when we should see the yolk sac and when should we see the embryo? So otherwise it, it, would, it would mean that there is, you know, there are the bad prognostic signs which are there if the yolk sac is not there or the embryo is not there by some certain time or by some certain dimensions. So it is said that the yolk sac, it should be two to six millimeters in diameter. Even a larger yolk sac, it has a bad prognosis. The yolk sac should be seen on transvaginal sonography when the MSD, the, that is the mean sac diameter is eight millimeters and on transabdominal sonography when it is 20 millimeters. Similarly for embryo on transvaginal sonography, it should be uh, it should be seen when the MSD is 16 millimeters on transabdominal it is 25 millimeters. So remember these dimensions that yolk sac should be seen on TVS when the MSD is 8 millimeters and on TAS when it is 20 millimeters. Similarly here it should be seen embryo should be seen when the MSD is 16 millimeters and it is 25 millimeters. Now, what are the signs which tell us, what are the USD findings which are diagnostic of pregnancy failure, which tell you that, you know, this pregnancy has failed. So if the mean sac diameter is more than or equal to 25 millimeters and there is no embryo, that means it's a failed pregnancy. So you should see an embryo when the MSD reaches 25 millimeters. That is what we saw. So MSD 25 millimeters embryo should be seen. And if you see the embryo, then when should you see the fetal heart rate? When should the cardiac activity be seen? When the CRL is, it reaches seven millimeters or more, the heart activity should be seen. If the heart activity is not seen, that means it's a failed pregnancy. So CRL more than equal to seven millimeters without the heart activity, that is the sign, a diagnostic sign of pregnancy failure. MSD more than equal to 25 millimeters with no embryo, that is a diagnostic sign. That's the diagnostic sign of the pregnancy failure. Now, this is a quick overview of the timeline of the normal early pregnancy development, a question, a probable question that can be asked in your upcoming AIMS exam. So as you can see, the first thing which comes is the gestational sac. Then there is yolk sac. Then there is embryo with the cardiac activity. And then there is the amnion. Then there is the amnion. Remember this overall, you can remember on transvaginal sonography as four, five, six weeks. That means the gestational sac is seen at around four to 4.5 weeks. 
yolk sac is seen at 5 to 5.5 weeks and the embryo is seen at around 6 weeks. So remember gestational sac, yolk sac, embryo and amnion. This is the sequence of development, the normal timeline development, the milestones in the early pregnancy. So I hope now you are clear, all of you are clear with the signs that we saw in early pregnancy, intradecidual sign. We saw the double decidual sac sign, intradecidual sign, the double decidual sac sign, the double bleb sign. We saw the yolk sac. The appearance of the yolk sac is the first definitive sign of early pregnancy. And if the MSG is more than equal to 25 millimeters, but there is no embryo, it's diagnostic of pregnancy failure. If the CRL has reached 7 millimeters and still you cannot see the uh, fetal cardiac activity, that means it's a failed pregnancy. So all this is extremely, extremely important for your practice as well and for your exam as well. I hope you have learned out of this video. If you have, please share it with your friends, whoever are into medical uh, practice and make sure you like this video and you subscribe to my channel for further such videos. Goodbye. Take care. Signing off for today. Dr. Nikita here.